and we are going to take our series for 1 over 1 minus x and change it up a little bit. But we're going to this time throw in some calculus into the mix. So here's our basic general one that you guys should all know, which is 1 over 1 minus x. Now this particular series also has an IOC of negative 1 to 1. So what I want to do next is I want to take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Well, we're going to get 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Because I know this series is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on, the derivative of the series is also going to represent this function, which is different. And so if I take the derivative of 1, I get 0. The derivative of x is 1, and then 2x then 3x squared, and I'm going to go ahead and write the next one because I always want to write four terms in my series, and then the general nth one. Now how can we follow the pattern here? We take the n, bring it down using our power rule, and we have x to the n minus 1 power. So notice how our general nth term has changed to n times x to the n minus 1. Our first term is 1. When you have a 0 here, we don't count that 0 as our first term. It's gone. So our first term is actually the 1. Our second term is 2x and so on. So over here, we're actually going to start at n equals to 1. The IOC for this series is going to be the same. So here's a whole brand new series. Now let's take a look at a different series. 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now this is 1 over 1 minus a negative x squared. Again, I want to think of this as a over 1 minus r. So I know that my first term is 1, and then I'm multiplying by a negative x squared every time. So notice it's an alternating series. And my general term is going to be negative 1 to the n, and then I always have even powered exponents, so I'm going to have x to the 2n. So I can write this out in my summation notation. Pay attention to what we need our index to start at. So I'm going to start at n equals to 0. Now this particular one also had an IOC of negative 1 to 1, because that was negative of our x squared being less than 1. Now I want to go ahead now and introduce and use the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part of it which states that the integral from a to x of some f of t dt equals to big F of x minus big F of a. I want to integrate this series now. So I'd like for you to stop and think for a second what happens when we integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared. We get arctan, or inverse tan of x. So we've got arctan of x. This is going to go from 0 to x. Now the reason why it's 0 is because you see how this is a? This is going to be what your series is centered about. So now I'm going to take our series and write it in here. So I'll write the general term as well. So that's going to be negative 1 to the n, t to the 2n, and then dt. So now I'm going to integrate term by term. So the integral of 1 with respect to t is now a t. The integral of t squared is 1 third t cubed, then 1 fifth t to the fifth, negative 1 seventh t to the seventh. So what is our pattern here? We're going to take the exponent, t to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1. And this is a definite integral, so this is still going to go from 0 to x. Then I need to plug in my x and my 0. So when I plug in the x, I get x minus 1 third x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 1 seventh x to the seventh. Okay. All right, so notice this is not a geometric series because we are not multiplying by the same thing every time, but it's still what we call a power series, and this would be written in summation notation, of course, using that same general nth term, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, but what do we want this series to start from? n equals 2, this should be a 0. We need to also figure out the interval of convergence, when you integrate a series, you almost have the same IOC. We must also check the endpoints because sometimes weird things happen. So what I mean by that is since the original IOC was negative 1 to 1, I need to also check x equals to 1, x equals to negative 1. I'm going to plug in negative 1 to my arctan. Does that exist? Can the tangent value equal to 1? 
Yes, it's pi over 4. Now, because that exists, then I know I can plug this in. And here's something really interesting and really neat for you guys to see. You can approximate pi over 4 by adding and subtracting all of these numbers. So check it out on your calculator if you'd like. And then I can also calculate arctan of negative 1. That's negative pi over 4. So notice it's negative 1 plus 1 third minus 1 fifth plus 1 seventh minus 1 ninth and so on. So what we do is we go back and we say that this series right here, which represents arctan, converges from negative 1 to 1 and it includes the endpoint. All right, we're going to do one more. It's going to start off with looking at the series 1 over 1 plus x. So this is a first term 1 multiplying by a negative x every time. Again, noticing that each time I write out the general nth term in addition to writing out the first four terms and I write out the summation notation and I write out the IOC. Always list those things. Now, what is the integral? of 1 over 1 plus x. That's going to be natural log of 1 plus x. This also has the series centered at 0, so I'm going to integrate from 0 to x. 1 minus t plus t squared minus t cubed and so on. So integrating term by term, I get x minus 1 over 2x squared plus 1 over 3x cubed minus 1 over 4x to the fourth the negative 1 to the n, that doesn't change because it doesn't have a t there. We're going to get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So here we also have to check our endpoints again. Our original IOC was negative 1 to 1. So I want to test when x equals to negative 1. I get ln of negative 1 plus 1, which is ln of 0. Now that doesn't exist, so therefore it has to be an open interval at negative 1. But what about at x equals to positive 1? I get ln of 2. So that does exist, so this is going to be closed at positive 1. Here's the series for natural log of 1 plus x. Now you can also go ahead and do something similar for 1 over x. And I just want to point a little bit of this out. I'm not going to write out this whole thing. This will be something you guys can think about because this particular one that we did the other day happens to have a series centered not at 0, because if you notice you see the little x minus 1 there. When you integrate, you need to make sure you have 1 as your lower limit and x as the upper limit. And don't forget to plug in the 1. Alright, and our very last one, here's my function. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Can you figure out what f of x is? Let's take the derivative of this, see if you can figure it out from here. Go ahead and take the derivative of this series term by term, just like we did on example 1. So the derivative of 1 is 0, and then the derivative of x is 1. Then the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x over 2 factorial. Then 3x squared over 3 factorial. 4x cubed over 4 factorial nx to the n minus 1 over n factorial. Now can we simplify this out a little bit? 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And then this becomes x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial, which the next term of that is actually x to the n over n factorial. What do you guys notice? This series and this series are identical. So what kind of function do you know is the exact same thing as its derivative? There is only one such function that fits this bill, and that's going to be e to the x. So this is our series, power series, for e to the x. You'll want to make sure you know this one. Now the IOC for e to the x is going to be all real numbers in summation notation. You can also write this out. So this will be n equals to 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And remember, it's okay to have a 0 factorial because by definition, 0 factorial equals to 1. So you'll see that it actually fits the pattern all the way through. 